In this video we're going to learn how to handle file uploads using Django REST framework and we're going to show how to integrate these file uploads with Django's models and with the database. And we'll learn about parsers in Django REST framework that look at the content type HTTP header and use that to decide how to correctly parse incoming request content. And we'll also see how to use things like read-only fields in Django REST Framework. And finally, we'll also write some JavaScript code that calls our REST Framework API and uploads a file over an AJAX request. And that functionality mimics how you might call a file upload endpoint using a framework like React or Vue.js or a similar single page application framework. So let's get started. If you're enjoying this content, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and consider buying the channel a coffee if you're finding this content useful. Let's dive in. So we're going to start by creating a Django model that has a file field. And let's say we were creating a job application website and we want users to upload their CVs or their resumes and have that uploaded file stored on the file system with a link to that in the database table. Now what we have here is a models.py file and we have a user model that's extending Django's abstract user. And if we go over to settings.py and go to the bottom of this file, you can see we've set the auth user model to point to that particular model. So let's go back to models.py and we're going to add some new fields to the user model here. So we're extending what Django gives us with some extra fields. Now at this point, there's two things we can do if we want the user to have a CV on the system. First of all, we could take the approach where a user can only have a single CV on the system at one time, in which case all we need to do is create a file field here on the user model. And that's because one user can only have one CV at a given time. Now, if you want to allow a user to upload multiple CVs, you could then create an entity in the database and link the user to that entity. And it's gonna allow the user to upload multiple CVs to the system and they can have a timestamp and the most recent, for example, could be selected by default but a user could choose between different CVs. We're not gonna take that approach here. Let's just keep things simple, but it's worth mentioning that if you need multiple CVs, you can use that approach. So I'm gonna create a field here on the user and it's gonna be called CV, and that's gonna be equal to a Django file field. Now, when we upload the object, we're gonna store it in a particular location under the Django media directory, and we can specify that location with the upload to parameter. And I'm gonna store this in a location called CVs, and we're gonna set it to be nullable by setting null equals true, and also blank equals true. And this means that a user can be created in the database even if they don't have a CV on the system. And as well as that, I'm gonna add a second field here called uploaded at, and that's gonna be equal to a models.datetime field. And again, we're going to allow this to be nullable. So let's pass those same two parameters. Now, once we have the amended user model, let's go to the terminal and we're gonna run the make migrations command. And then after we've done that, we can run migrate. And when we run the migrate command, it's gonna make those changes to the database. Now, because we're uploading files here, what we're gonna also do is go back to settings.py. And at the bottom here, I'm gonna set a couple of settings. The first one is gonna be the media root. We're gonna look at the base directory and create a media directory underneath that. And that is where all user uploaded media files are going to be stored on the local file system. And as well as that, we're gonna set a media URL here. And I'm gonna set that to slash media. So we now have the model and database set up for storing a file against the user. What we're now going to do is bring in Django REST Framework. Now to begin with, we need to install REST Framework. So at the bottom, pip install, and it's Django REST Framework, all one word. We can install it using that command and make sure you do that in a Python virtual environment. And what we're going to do next is we're going to create a new file here, and it's gonna be a serializer in Django REST Framework that we're going to create. And let's say that we have a user on the system and we're going to allow that user to upload a CV. So let's create a new file here in the core application called serializers.py. And at the top of this file, I'm going to import a couple of things. First of all, the serializers module from Django REST framework and also the user model that we've created. Now let's create a class here. This is gonna be the serializer class and it's gonna be called CV Upload Serializer. And we're going to set this to a serializers.model serializer. Now you could also use a serializer here, but we're gonna use a model serializer and we're gonna link it to the user model in the serializer meta class. So the model is going to be user and we only want to have a single field here. So we're gonna pass fields and set that equal to a list containing a single element and it's not resume, it's CV. Now this CV field exists on the model. It's this field here 
that allows the user to upload a file to the file system. So what we're telling Django REST framework is that this particular serializer should operate only on that field on the user model here. Once we've created the serializer, what we can do is go to the Django views.py file and we're going to create a Django REST framework class in this file. So let's create a class just below here. And this is going to be called upload CV view. And I want that to inherit from the Django REST framework API view. And an API view in REST framework, this allows you to perform or to define methods that match the request type. So for example, a post request, you can define a post method here that takes self and the request in, and you can perform any logic you like within the post method when that post request is received by this view here. So we need to import the API view from Django REST framework. And I'm gonna to go to the top here and bring quite a few import, imports in here at the top. So I'm gonna paste these in here from REST framework. We're importing status. We're also importing the response object in REST framework. And of course the API view class as well. This is a base class that you can inherit from when you define some views in REST framework. It's one of many ways to define views in REST framework. And it's the one that we're gonna use for this file upload view. Now, one thing we can do with the API view is we can define a property on that to tell the API view what the expected serializer class will be. And that is the serializer underscore class property. We're gonna set that to the CV upload serializer. And again, we need to go to the top here and import that from the serializers.py file. So we've imported the CV upload serializer. What do we want to do in the post request method when a post request is sent with the user's CV? Now I'm gonna add a comment here. We want to assume that the request.user will be sent to an authenticated user, but I'm not going to handle that in this video. We're not gonna build logins in this video. Let's just keep it simple. And what I'm gonna do is a small hack here. I'm gonna set the user property on the request and we're gonna set it to user.objects.first. So what that's gonna do is pull out the very first user from the database and it's gonna set the request.user property to that user. I'm gonna to go to the top here and import the user model from models.py. And I want to stress here again, anywhere that we use request.user in this method that we're about to define, that would normally come from the authenticated user. But in this case, we're just pulling that user out of the database for simplicity. So then I'm gonna get a reference here to the serializer by calling self.serializer class. And that's a method on the API view in Django REST framework. So if you've defined a serializer class property on the API view, you can get access to that with this method. And then we can pass an instance into this. So we're gonna pass request.user. And remember in a normal view, that will be the authenticated user. And as well as an instance, we can pass some data in here and we're gonna pass request.data. Now what request.data is in Django REST framework is it's a reference to the content that's been sent in, in this case, the post request. So when the user posts data in Django REST framework, we can get access to that with request.data. Now this .data property is added to the request object in Django REST framework. It's not available in a normal Django request. So if you're accessing request.data, make sure you're doing that within a subclass of a Django REST framework view. Otherwise, if you're wanting to access the posted data in a normal Django request object, you can get that through the request.post query dictionary. Now, just to explain this line of code here, I'm gonna to go to the REST framework documentation on serializers. You can see we have a class here called comment and it contains some properties such as email, content, and created. And then we create a comment here and store it in a variable. Now we can create a serializer around that data and this one's called comment serializer. And then you can serialize objects by passing them into the serializer. So that's one way of creating a serializer when we pass an object into it. But I'm gonna scroll down a little bit here to this section on saving instances. If we go down a little bit further here, we can see this section here. Now I want to highlight this. When we call .save, this is either going to create a new instance or it's going to update an existing one. And this depends on if an existing instance was passed in when you instantiated the serializer class. So let's look at these two definitions here. This is going to create a new instance because we're passing raw data into the serializer. So it's gonna create a new instance of the model. On the other hand, if we look at the line below, we pass an instance in along with the raw data. And what that means is it's going to take that raw data and update the existing comment instance. Now, if we look at our code back in views.py, we are instantiating the serializer class and we're passing the user model in here. 
along with the raw data from the request. And this means that the user model is going to be updated. We're not going to get back a new instance of the user model. It's just going to update the existing model. And once we've created that serializer, what we can do is check if it's valid with the serializer.isValid method. And notice that the API for this is exactly the same as it is for Django form classes. We can then call serializer.save. And again, as I said a second ago, that's going to update the existing user instance with the new data. And the new data coming in with this upload serializer is just going to contain the file field for the CV. So let's go back to views.py. And after we've saved the serializer, that's going to update the database table for the user. And we can now return a Django REST framework response along with the serialized data. Now, after we call serializer.isValid, we can get back the data from the serializer using the serializer.data property. And finally, if the serializer is not valid, we're going to go down here and return a response with the serializer.errors added to that response. And that's going to have a status of HTTP 400 bad request. So I hope that makes sense. We've got an upload CV view here, and that's a subclass of the REST framework API view. And that takes a post request and it's going to serialize an uploaded file that's coming in from the request.data and it's going to use the CV upload serializer to do that. And that particular serializer has a reference to the model's CV field and that's a file field. Once we've got that data coming in and we have it in the serializer, we're going to check if everything is okay. And then we save that data to the database and return a response to the client. Let's now go to urls.py and we're going to create a URL for this Django REST framework view. So let's add a path here and I'm going to give it the root of upload-cv and then we're going to link that to the view that we created and that was views.uploadcv view and because that's a class-based view we need to use the asView function in Django to convert that to a functional view that will then be used in the Django application. And then finally, we can add a name for this URL and it's going to be again upload-cv. Okay, so we now have a way to upload a CV in this project. We're now going to test this out. So let's save this and at the bottom, I'm going to start the Django server. And in fact, before we do that, let's create a super user here. We need to have a user in the database because we're pulling out a user using this user.objects.first method. So I'm going to create a user with the name of admin and we'll give the user a password. And that is going to allow us to then log into Django's admin UI. And once we've done that, we're going to go to admin.py and we're going to register the user model. So from models, let's import user. And then we can use admin.site.register in order to register that user model so that we can access that in the Django admin UI. So let's now run the server and we're going to go to the browser. So I'm now in the Django admin UI. We're going to go to the user model and we can see this admin user that we have here. If we click on that user and scroll down to the bottom, you can see the CV field here at the bottom and that's currently empty. It's currently not got a file attached to it. So the next stage is to use the API that we've created in Django REST framework with this particular view that we created here in order to upload that file. So I'm going to go to the API view provided by Django REST framework and that's actually at slash upload CV. That was the URL that we configured in the urls.py file. Now we can see we're getting this error and the reason for this, if you get this error, it's because you've not added REST framework to installed apps. So let's go back to Django's settings.py module and we're going to go to the installed apps setting and we're going to add REST underscore framework to that setting. Once we've done that, we can go back here and refresh the page. And this time we get presented with this page where we can upload a CV. Now, as it says here, a get request is not allowed, but you can see the HTML form below. We can choose a file here and then we can post that file to the back end. So let's try that out. So I've selected a file here called CV sample. This is a dummy file. It's not actually a CV. And what we're going to do is just post that to the server. And you can see what we get back here is a single field called CV and we have a link to the actual uploaded file. Now you can see if we expand this a bit that the file is in the media directory and what we have is a URL here for the media URL for this particular resource. So it's in the CVs directory and there is the name of the file that we uploaded. Now if we go back to VS Code and look at the media directory, we can see a new directory has been created there called CVs and we now have the uploaded file appearing in that directory. This CVs directory, this is being created here because of this upload to parameter to the file field. Now let's go back to the REST framework API view here. 
And you can see if you look at the raw data here, the media type expected by default is application slash JSON. Now when you upload a file, you're not going to send JSON data. What you're going to send is typically multi-part form data. And this is just a different encoding type. It's a different way to send the data from the front end or the client to the Django server. I'm going to go to the REST framework documentation. And if you look at the API guide, there is a page on parsers. Now REST framework includes a number of built-in parser classes, and these allow you to accept requests with various media types. And let's look at the section on how the parser is determined here. So the set of valid parsers for a view is always defined as a list of classes. We're going to do that in a second. But when request.data is accessed, what REST framework is going to do is it's going to look at this content type header on the incoming request. And using that header, using the value of that, it's going to determine which parser to use in order to parse the request content. So when you're developing client applications, you should always remember to make sure that you set the content type parameter when you send data in an HTTP request. And if you're using React or Vue.js and you're typically sending data to the server, you're often going to be sending data in the format of JSON. So application slash JSON is a sensible default for REST framework. And it's also a sensible default to assume that an API might return JSON data as well. Now you can specify a list of parsers on a class. And these can also be set globally in a REST framework setting called default parser classes. And this setting here is setting that default to the JSON parser. Now, if we scroll down, we can see that a set of parsers can be set for an individual view or a view set in REST framework. And all we need to do in the API view in this case is define a field called parser classes. We're going to do that now and we're going to set it to a set of parsers that we expect to be used on this API view. Now, if we scroll down again, we can get the API reference. Now, REST Framework comes with some built-in parsers. We have the JSON parser, we have a form parser, and what that's going to do is parse HTML form content, and it populates request.data with a query dictionary of data. Now, note this statement here in REST Framework. You typically want to use both a form parser and a multi-part parser together in order to fully support HTML form data. And the multi-part parser is below here, and what this is going to do is parse multi-part HTML form content. And importantly, that supports file uploads. So what we're going to do is take the advice of REST Framework. We're going to set the parser classes to the form parser and the multi-part parser. And that's going to tell REST Framework what this view is going to expect in terms of incoming request data. So let's go back to the views.py file in our application here. And we're going to add a new property to the upload CV view. And that's going to be called parser classes. We're going to set that to a list and I'm going to go to the top of the file and from REST Framework.parsers, we're going to import the two parcels from that module. So let's copy the names of those and reference them here in this parser classes field. So we've added the multi-part parser and we're also going to add the form parser. And we can now save this after adding that new field. Let's go back to the API now and refresh this page. And you can see by default, the media type has now changed the expected media type is multi-part form data. And that's because we've told REST Framework what we're expecting here. And that's HTML form data that includes a file. So it's going to be encoded with the multi-part form data media type. Now, if we try this out again after adding that new field, let's go back to the HTML form and select that same CV sample. Once we've selected that, we can hit post. And again, it's going to return the file URL for us. And notice that because we've uploaded a file with the same name as the original file that we uploaded earlier, it's added some random data to the end of that file name. And that's just to avoid it overwriting the other file in the media root directory. So let's now move on. We might want to improve this setup in a few ways. First of all, if we look at models.py, when we upload a CV, we're going to want to update this uploaded at field in the model and set it to whatever the timestamp was when the CV was uploaded. Now, currently nothing is happening with this field. So what we're going to do is go back to serializers.py and as well as the CV, I'm going to add a reference to that field called uploaded at. Now, one thing to note is that this should be set automatically when the file is uploaded and we're not expecting this to be sent over the API from the client to the server. So this is going to be what's called a read only field in Django REST framework. And in order to make it read only, we're going to override the default definition for this field. It's going to be a serializers.datetime field. And what we can pass here is a keyword argument called read only and we're going to set that to true. 
So by setting read-only to true, we're telling Django REST framework and we're telling this serializer that we don't expect a field called uploaded at to come in from the client, but we do want to return that after we've saved the serializer and we have the new instance, we want to return the uploaded at in the response. Now in order to set this value, what we're going to do is override a method on the serializer and that's the update method. And that takes self and an instance as well as validated data. Now, if you're wondering what this does, I'm going to go to this website here for Classy Django REST Framework. I'll leave a link to this in the description of the video. This gives you detailed descriptions with full methods and attributes for all of Django REST Framework's class-based views and serializers. So we're going to go to the serializer class here, and I'm going to scroll down to the methods section so we can look at all the methods that we can override on a serializer. And this one here is the update method. And you can see it takes self, instance, and validated data as parameters. And we've provided that here. And if we go to the model form, so I'm going to go back here and go to, sorry, the model serializer. What we're going to do is go down again to that update method. And we can look at the definition of this in a model serializer. And you can actually see here the logic that's performed when the update method is called. Now, all we're going to do is go back to VS Code. And we're going to take the instance and we're going to set it to the current timestamp. So let's take that instance and we're going to set the uploaded at property. And that exists on the instance because we have a model serializer. So the instance is going to be a user and that user has this field called uploaded at. And we're going to set this to timezone.now. Now we need to import the timezone module at the top here from django.utils. And as the name implies, timezone.now, it's just going to give you the current date time. And then after we've set the uploaded at property, we're going to call the update method on the super class. So we're passing the instance into that as well as the validated data. So the only thing we're doing in this overridden update method is setting the instance.uploaded at property to the current date time. And then we defer to the super class, which in this case is the model serializers update method. And because we have read only set to true, when we set this, when the file is uploaded, we get back a response, and this time the response should include this timestamp when the file was uploaded. So let's now test that out by going back to the REST Framework browsable API. What we're gonna do here is upload that same file once again. So I'm gonna choose the file now. And after I've chosen that, we can post this to the back end. And this time we not only get back the CV reference, but we also get back a timestamp when the CV was uploaded. And if I go back to the Django admin and we look at this admin user, if we scroll to the bottom, you can see that the CV is now referenced here and we now have an uploaded at timestamp as well. Now let's finish the video by showing how to call this API from a client side application. So we want to upload a file essentially using JavaScript and this could be done in a React or a Vue.js application or a Svelte application or similar. Now to keep things simple in this video, we're going to write this code in a Django template. So I have a templates directory here with an index.html file. And this file is what's returned by the view that we have in the Django project. So it's returning index.html with an empty context. Let's go back to index.html and we're going to add some HTML code here. Let's add a form element. And what we want to set the action to here is the URL that we have that's defined here for our upload CV view. So I'm going to copy the name of this and let's go back to index.url and we're going to use the Django URL template and we're going to paste in the upload CV URL here. So it's going to post the data to that URL and let's set the method to post here. And because we're uploading a file, we need to set the encoding type. That's the enc type attribute on the form. And we set that to multipart slash form data. And then I'm going to close the form element. And because we're sending a post request, I'm going to add the CS CSRF token template tag inside this form. And that's going to add a hidden field to the form that's going to allow you to submit this data. Once we've done that, let's add an input of type file. And we're going to give this input a name of file as well. And we can close that off. And finally, we need to allow the user to submit this. So let's add a button of type submit. And we'll give that the text of submit here and then we can close off this button. So a very simple form here. It's not going to look good on the browser, but it's going to do for this video. Let's go to the browser and I'm going to go to the root URL of this application. And we have the form here where we can choose a file from our file system and we have a submit button here. Now what I'm going to do is choose that same CV file now. And now that that's chosen, I'm going to submit this. And you can see that we get redirected here to the Django REST Framework API response. So the upload is working. We've selected a file in that form. 
but we're being redirected on the response to this upload CV page. Now in a single page application or even with HTMX, we'd submit this form with the file field using an AJAX request that does not reload the page and does not redirect us to somewhere else in the application. So what I'm gonna do is go back to this page here and we're gonna go back to the code for this and we're gonna rework what we have here to call the backend via an AJAX request. Now in order to do that, we're gonna to need to write some JavaScript here just for demonstration. So let's create a script tag within this template and we're gonna listen for the load event on the window. And when we get that, we know the page has loaded and we can start referencing elements on that page. So I'm gonna get a reference to the form and to do that, we can use the document.querySelector method and we can get the form element. So document.querySelector is a JavaScript DOM method and it's gonna take a selector as a parameter and it's gonna return the first one of these it finds. And there's only one form here, so it's gonna find this and return it and that's gonna be stored in the form variable. So just a heads up here, I know there's a lot of HTMX fans that don't like JavaScript, but we are gonna write some JavaScript for the rest of this video. But hopefully that's gonna demonstrate how we can call these file API views over an AJAX request. So once we have the form, we're going to get a reference to the submit URL. So the form has an attribute called action that contains a reference to the URL. So we're gonna get that now, and I'm gonna store it in a variable called submit URL. And that's gonna be equal to form.getAttribute and get attribute again, that's a method in the DOM. And we're gonna get the action attribute out of that form. And I want to get a reference to something else and that's the input of type file. So let's paste this in here. So again, we're using the query selector method and we're looking for an input of type file. And the final thing I want to do is get a reference to the Django CSRF token. And to do that, we can use the query selector method. And again, we're looking for an input and Django gives the input, which is a hidden input, a name equal to this here. So we're gonna look for that and get it back here and store it in the CSRF variable. So now that we have the references to these objects, what we can do is add an event listener to the form. So we can use form.addEventListener and we're gonna listen for the submit event. And when we get that, what we're gonna do is, first of all, we're gonna prevent the default action with e.preventDefault. So in JavaScript, when you have an event listener, you can pass a callback function that optionally will take the event itself as a parameter. We're taking that event, we're calling it E, and we're calling the prevent default method on that event. So that's gonna prevent the submission being sent to the server and reloading the page. So that's the first step. The second step is gonna to be to actually submit the file using an AJAX request. So what we're gonna do is set up a variable here called form data, and that's gonna be equal to a new form data object. We're also gonna set some headers here and that's gonna allow Django to accept an AJAX request. So we need to add the CSRF token because it's a post request. So we're gonna add a header here called x-csrf token. And we can set that to the value of this input that we pulled out here on line 18. So let's reference that. And to get the value, we can use the dot value property on that input. So we'll add these headers to the fetch request that we're gonna send in a second. What we're now going to do is take the form data that we have and we're gonna call an append method on that. And we're gonna append to a key called file here what we've got from the file input. So the file input, when the form is submitted, should contain the file that's been selected by the user. So we can get the files by referencing a property called dot .files and .files is a JavaScript array, so we can index in at element zero in order to get that file that's been selected by the user. Now the form data we're building up, we're gonna send that as the body of the post request. That's why we're doing this. We can finally do that now by sending a fetch request and we're gonna send the fetch request to the submit URL for the form. So let's paste that in here. And then as a second parameter, we're gonna pass a JavaScript object of configuration and data. So the method of this is gonna be a post request. So we're telling fetch to send a post request and we're gonna add the form data as the body. So let's add that as the body key. And finally, we're gonna add some headers here and set that to the headers that we defined on line 23. And that's adding the CSRF token so that Django knows what that token is and it can validate that token. Now, when you send a fetch request, you get back something in JavaScript called a promise. You can use dot then to accept the result of that promise. So we're gonna take the response in this case, and we're gonna convert that to a JavaScript object with response.json. And then after we've done that, response.json is also gonna return a promise. But when that resolves, we can get back the data. And I'm just gonna console.log that data to the browser console. 
So that's quite a bit of JavaScript. I hope that makes sense. We're getting a reference to the form and then we're extracting the submit URL from that form. We're also getting a reference to the file input and the Django CSRF hidden input. Then we add an event listener to the form that we have. We're listening for the submit event. We're preventing that being sent by default to the server. And we're then creating a form data object and appending the selected file to that object and sending a post request using the fetch function and adding that form data as the body. So what I'm going to do is just save all of this and we're going to go back to the page that we have here. And I'm going to refresh this page to bring in that new JavaScript. And I'm going to select the file again. Now before I submit this, let's bring up the browser developer tools and go to the console. And let's hit submit here and see what we get back. Now we're getting back a response from a REST framework API endpoint. And that contains a link to the CV that's been uploaded, as well as that timestamp that we added earlier. So this time we're uploading the file over an AJAX request using a form data object and adding that to the body of the fetch method. And then Django REST Framework in this case is accepting that request. It's parsing the uploaded file from that and it's returning a response to the client containing the link to that file and the timestamp. And if you look at the timestamp 1931, if you go back to the Django admin, for this user and refresh, we expect to see that updating at the bottom and you can see that it has. So we've sent this post request and that's an Ajax request and REST framework is able to handle that file upload and it's storing the uploaded file on the file system on the server and returning a response to the client. And if we go back to the page here and we look at the network tab, you can see the fetch request that was sent and here we have the response data. Now, if we look at the headers that were sent along with that request, we can scroll down here to get the request headers. You can see the content type is set to multi-part form data. And it turns out when you use a fetch request like this and you set the body to a form data object, it's automatically going to set the content type header to multi-part form data. So we now have an API that allows us to upload files from a client to Django REST framework. And then those files are stored on the local file system and also linked to the user that uploaded the file. Now, a natural extension of this is to go to views.py and rather than hard coding request.user, what you can do is, of course, actually authenticate the user and then send the request to the API with a token that allows Django REST Framework to identify who the user is. That's out with the scope of this video, but if you're interested in more, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. And if you're enjoying this content or finding it useful, consider buying the channel a coffee. We have a link in the description. Check it out and we'll see you in the next video.